Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our study of the mother of harlots in Revelation 17.5. Very few Christians are hearing the evidence presented in our expository study of the book of Revelation, but that number is much smaller when you consider the information presented in our study of this chapter, Revelation 17. So we hope you will follow along in all of these studies and share them with in, loved ones. Uh, but there's this spirit of Judas over that nation right now. Right. It's just there. Mm -hmm. This is a self-hating Jew who is CEO of Starbucks. I wouldn't wow. buy their... Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you two truths. Best coffee I've ever had. Amen. I won't buy it. Amen. Wow. This is just one of the reasons. They refuse to do business with Israel, but they have 600 stores in Muslim countries. Wow. Whose side you on? Right. They've been invited to Israel. Israel's got an open door for them. Judas. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Same spirit. You say, why? Because he's a Jew. I'm not just saying it. He's a Jew. Yeah. Self-hating Jew. <laughs> Bunch of them like that. Wow. Now, I believe the Antichrist is going to be a Jew. Do I say that because I, I think all Jews are bad and evil and they, you know, they're ruining the world? I, no. I, I believe that the same thing is going to happen with the Antichrist that happened with Jesus Christ. Who betrayed Jesus Christ? A Jew named Judas. Who's going to betray the nation of Israel? A Jew with the spirit of Judas. Amen. Stupid Gentile alert. <laughs> Hold on a second. Where did it go? That's not him. There it is. I'll come back to this. This guy, Stephen Anderson, is putting out a movie. It's coming out, I think, in March. The Anti-Defamation League is deeply troubled at the upcoming documentary film denigrating Jews and Judaism. He claims to be a King James Bible-believing preacher. He rejects dispensations. He replaces uh, Israel with the church. And he then attacks the Jews and denies the Holocaust. Wow. He'd be a perfect Roman Catholic. <laughs> it's a growing number of preachers wow. in fundamental churches that are doing this. Right. You say, what? well, that's what we have to expect, folks. When a great falling away comes, it's not going to be everybody but the Baptists. And he claims to be a Baptist. Go back to this flag. I want to mention this again. That's a hexagram. It's an occult symbol. Yeah. It's the perfect flag for an unbelieving nation who's about to sign a or confirm a covenant with the Antichrist. Yep. And you have these novice false teachers in the pulpit who are constantly saying that Somehow that proves that the Jews that are in Israel today are not the real thing or are not of God. It's exactly what God said would happen and that flag is the perfect symbol for what's happening in Israel today. Amen. I put that up there because we talked about this in Mark 13, the coming persecution. You notice the yellow star just like they had to wear during the Holocaust. Jude. Mark 13, verses 9 through 13. If you want to Listen to that message, the coming persecution. Also, we've handed this out, and I need to get some more copies, but we have also, I want to clarify, pre-trib persecution. There are a lot of pre-trib rapture believers who have been, they're lazy, and they don't understand. Just because we're not going through the tribulation doesn't mean you won't suffer persecution. That's right. That's right. And I'll come back to that in a minute as well. But we'll take a more thorough look at Israel's fall and the time of Jacob's trouble in another study. But this is what happens when you replace Israel with the church and think you're a Jew. You lose your mind. Arizona pastor predicts AIDS-free Christmas if all gays are killed. As God commands. God commanded that in Israel, if you were a covenant Jew and you were caught in the act of sodomy 
as if you were caught in the act of adultery, if you were caught in the act of bestiality, if you were caught in the act of rape, there were death penalties for Jews in the Mosaic Covenant. We're not Jews. We're not in that dispensation. But because this guy rejects the dispensations, and all these preachers just like him, are rejecting the dispensations, they're replacing Israel with the church, and they then assume this theocratic idea where he is literally, and I watched the video, literally saying that if the United States of America would just kill all the queers, we would have almost, he, he does specify that it would be most of the AIDS cases would be gone. Wow. God didn't send us to kill people. Amen. Amen. Do I believe that that's a sin? Yes. So what do I do? I preach the truth to them. Amen. And then if they reject the truth and they want to continue in that sin, that's none of my business. Amen. Yeah. That's between them and God. Amen. Calling for their death shows what happens whenever you stop teaching dispensations and you start messing with the book, you lose your mind. Amen. How many of you heard me say that? Mess with that book, you'll lose your mind. That's right. And that's what's happening right here. So onward, Antichrist soldiers. And meanwhile, the world continues to prep for the arrival of Antichrist and the mark of the beast. I want to show you a couple of things, and I want to move a little fast because I don't want to keep you here all night. But this is going on. This is in Sweden. She's boasting about being among the first to get that microchip in her. Look what it says in your... The Bible says, uh, 2,000 years ago, the Bible said they would get a mark in their right hand or the forehead. Look where she's got it. Yeah. They're ignorant of the Bible and they don't realize they're fulfilling prophecy. And they don't even know it because they don't pick up the book. They won't read it. There are now several million people on the planet who are microchipped voluntarily. And what, for some reason they put it in their right hand and they, they actually do put it on the hairline in the forehead. Just like the Bible says. It's an amazing fulfillment of prophecy. Because Revelation 13, 16 says, And He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that's happening right now. That's not the mark of the beast, by the way. No. But it's a world preparing for the mark of the beast. And you can see it with your own eyes. And that poor girl needs prayer. So I want to close our study by running some references that should encourage us in these dark days now. Because not only did I just mention that as we see these things going on, it can get kind of ugly, but at the same time, it's the hand of God. But He's also left us some information, some promises. Write these down. We don't have time to turn to all of them. But these are memory verses. These are verses you ought to put in your heart and your mind. Romans 8, 18. You ask the question, are you suffering? Romans 8, 18, if you can see the screen, read it with me. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Persecution is coming. If you will lay down your life and surrender to Jesus Christ completely and allow Him to control you with His Spirit, when these days come, you can handle it. If you will not do that, then this will not be pretty. It's that simple. But we ought to have this attitude, if we're right with God, that the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared Amen. with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So you ask the question, what if we do suffer? Well, Acts 5.41, they had this attitude. It says, And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. I was out street preaching one time, someone threw a beer bottle and it went right over my head and smacked the uh, sign right, right behind me. If that had hit me in the head, I, it would have knocked me out. It was a full bottle, by the way. And it sort of freaked some of the other people out. They were ready to go. I said, I'm not going anywhere. Number one, did you notice he missed? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? But what if he had? 
I would have rejoiced that God had counted me worthy to suffer shame for His name. Amen. Amen. Yes, glad you brought that up. We have a brother in India that we've sent books and sent some offerings over to. And uh, Goa, I think it's G-A-O is where it's at in India. And he and some fellows over there got thrown in jail in India for just simply preaching the gospel. And, uh, but that's happened in America too. Yeah. And if you're ever locked up for preaching the gospel, you should rejoice that you were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. Did you know that suffering is a command? Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, a lot of people like some of the commandments and like to throw them out there, but they don't like these. Like 2 Timothy 1.8. It says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. Paul was in prison. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. You are commanded not to be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, but to be a partaker of the afflictions of the Gospel. Amen? Amen. The Bible says that Christians are to suffer. Now, you won't see that from Joel Osteen. You won't get it on TBN. The people who are living like kings and the stupid Christians who continue to send them the money eat it up because they're Laodicean and they are sitting there with itching ears who gather to themselves teachers who will scratch their itching little ears. But if you want the truth, Joel Osteen should be preaching 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Right. That explains Amen. why Joel Osteen isn't suffering. Amen. He's not living godly. He's Amen. living an ungodly uh, life of, uh, of filthy lucre. Right. I was telling somebody the other day, I know why God never made me a millionaire. Because every time I see these children, these missionaries overseas, and I see what, some, some places in Columbus, places in southern Ohio, places in West Virginia, I just want to write a check and... Do what, give them what they need. Amen. That's not what your TV preachers and your big time preachers are doing today. They're living in the lap, lap of luxury and they couldn't give a flip about these people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Suffering results in glory. Amen. Do you want the glory? 1 Peter 5.1 The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. It goes hand in hand. But we are never, I'm going to close with this, we are never subject to God's wrath. Amen. God will discipline you. God will let you suffer the stupidity of your own decisions. Greg Miller has suffered the stupidity of his own decisions. My, my health, I believe, is largely due to years ago stupid things I did. Some of it's hereditary, blah, 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 but some of it's my fault. But he, God will not pour out His wrath on His children. That's one of the reasons you know you're not going to be here for the tribulation period. Because 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're not appointed to wrath. Verse 10, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, whether you're alive or dead, we should live together with Him. Amen. 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 Verse 11, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also you do. Amen. We can be a comfort for one another, but a lot of Christians can't comfort other Christians because they have nothing but empty platitudes. Mm -hmm. But if you can talk to somebody with the knowledge of the Word in your head and your heart, you can actually comfort them by sharing the truth of the promises of God for believers. That's why it's so important for you to grow spiritually because people need you. It's not just about you being happy, Amen. happy, happy. It's Amen. about you being able to minister to others. Amen. And people are out there hurting. People need the Gospel and Christians need you. We need each other. Amen. Amen. And so we grow spiritually. We grow in the knowledge of the Word. God will use us. And that's what it's all about. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this study. We thank You for this book. And I thank You that everybody in the room has access to this book every day of the week. Amen. And that Your Holy Spirit will teach us and guide us through this book. 
will help us to remember it when we need it. If we hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against you, we will also find that word there ready to encourage us and lift us up in time of need. But also that we could speak the word and speak the truth of God to those who need to hear it. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you. I pray for everyone in this room that your peace will settle upon every heart that everyone will walk out of here tonight knowing that you are in control. That they will sense the Spirit of God walking with them and in them. Amen. And that you will open up opportunities for each of us to be used by you as ministers of the gospel and the ministry of reconciliation. And Lord, that Jesus would be the one to get all the glory and all the praise. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody said amen. <laughs> Jill, you got a question? Yeah, well, a question. Jill was asking me uh, what the chip was for. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, a tracking chip that if you uh, go missing, they can use GPS and locate you. But they're also developing the technology so that you can use it for banking. You don't have to carry credit cards. You can pull up and pump gas, and you don't even have to put run a card through the thing. It just registers. They're doing it now. Yeah, there's actually places right now that are doing that. No, this is voluntary right now, which is the astounding thing about it. I mean, there's millions of people doing it, but it's all voluntary. What'd you say? I lose my wallet all the time. Yeah, see, it, it, that's what the selling point is. You know, you won't. You can lose credit cards. You can lose your wallet. <laughs> But if you lose your hand or your forehead, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty hard thing to do. So it's being so, and, and people are chipping their pets, obviously. Well, They're also chipping their children. Dan is chipped. Yeah. And you know what? If you chip your pet, I'm not saying, oh, shame on you. That's the mark of the beast. I'm not saying that. No, no. But humans are not pets. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there's a thing, just to, as a human being, there's the thing of, uh, of privacy. And there's also just this creepiness about it. Oh, yeah. This 1984 George Orwellian Antichrist world government thing that I don't like. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so that's why I won't get chipped. Of course, if they hold you down and force you, there's nothing you can do about that. But that's the thing. Yeah. I won't say who, but this over the Thanksgiving holiday, I had a little <laughs> conversation with somebody because they are like, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking the mark. And we, we try to emphasize truth is truth. That's not the mark. You can't, and if, if someone forces, like military people have been forced to do this, the mark of the beast will be something you do voluntarily. It'll be an act of allegiance to a false god. And it'll be an act of um, betrayal to the true god. And it'll be something you know you're doing and all that. So you don't worry about what, going into the doctor one day and him accidentally marking you with the beast. <laughs> that mark of the beast, that can't happen. But uh, it's important because other people you might have to explain that to. What symbol were you talking about? You said it was something. Perfect. You've lost me. On the flag of the uh, Israeli, it's a hexagon. It's two triangles. Would you draw it for me? Isn't that the Star of David? Well, that's what they call it. It's not really. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, that's the, that's the actual name for it. Star of Raphaim. It's also the Star of Moloch. It's, there's a, you know how the same God is called different names? You, you know, the, the, the female deities are called different names. And the star of Rephaim, the star of Molech, it's a satanic symbol. And it's, it's also a Freemason symbol. And the founders of Israel were largely Freemason. And so they brought all that symbolism and everything in. What, if, they, if, they, if they wanted to have a biblical symbol, then the, there's the symbol of the, uh, I think it's the Israel State Department, is the Hanukkah uh, uh, candlestick. And if, if they were not atheistic and Freemasons, they would probably have used that as their symbol because there was some who wanted to do that. But because that wasn't what was on their mind, they used the satanic symbol on their flag. No, no, no. No, no Freemasons are... Uh, uh, yeah... Yeah, that's the problem, is that there, there are a lot of them in the churches and they bring their uh, Masonic... Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah Tracy... Uh,
When, when man's law goes against God's law, we obey God. Amen. Well, when you have the government telling people that two men and two women being called married is okay, it's legal. Are you going to go along with that? No. I'm here to tell you, I'm not. Amen. Amen. Anybody comes here and says, you either marry these two men or we'll close you down. You may think I'm terrible, but we'll have us a wedding. We will. And I'll say, do you, George, in defiance of God Almighty, <laughs> sickening every God-fearing person on the planet, want to declare yourself married to this thing? <laughs> And to you, Freddy, I shouldn't say that, I know a guy named Freddy, and he's not gay. Do you thing, there you go, that's safe. Do you, in total rebellion against the holy God of this earth, the one who created you, who says that what you are doing is an abomination, do you wish to be declared married to that thing? And now, in spite of what is good and true, 
and in complete contradiction to the law of God, I now announce that this reprobate government recognize you as married. <laughs> Kiss off. Where's the food? You gotta have food at a wedding. Hey, this. Shine in the